Well, good morning, everybody. I'm real excited that you're joining in, and we're going to be starting a new series today, and this series is called Being Positive in a Negative World. And I think, honestly, one of the reasons why I am so excited about this series is because, simply to be honest, I, I think I really need this one for myself in, in a lot of different ways. And you know, it's amazing how quickly, like so many people, I, I can tend to drift negative uh, in such a quick period of time. And in fact, how many of you would agree that around the world today, there's almost an epidemic of negativity, that people just look at things, seeing the downside over the, the positive side over and over again. And this happens in, you know, politically, this happens financially, this happens relationally, uh, this happens medically with all the COVID issues that's been going on, this happens racially. And for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about some very positive biblical qualities. And my prayer is, is that we will let God's Word transform us from a people who see him working in our lives, and therefore we will make the choice to be a positive people. So today what I want to do is I want to I spend this time talking about being optimistic. And it's interesting in a world that some people are more uh, optimistic than others, while at the same time some are just more naturally pessimistic. You see, an optimist will read a verse that says, my cup overflows, and they will say that the Lord is blessing me. Whereas the pessimist will read, my cup overflows, and they will think to themselves, there's going to be a mess in the house today. But, but the reason I, I say these things is because I think we all know people who tend to be this pessimistic side, who always tend to see the negative. And all over the world today, it seems like people are looking for a reason to be critical. They're looking for a reason to be negative. And it's almost as if it just helps people feel better to be incredibly negative. Now, I want you to think about what you hear all the time. And even in your own self-talk, without knowing it, you can talk down to yourself saying things like, you know, well, I don't have what it takes, my life stinks, I can't stand where I'm at in life right now. And literally, we say that to ourselves over and over again until we almost talk ourselves right into a bad life. You see, we talk to people all over the world today, and they're going to comment on negative things. People will say things like, the economy is doomed, morals are falling apart, you can't trust anybody, you know, churches are dying right and left, the government is just really just terrible, and the media, you don't know who you can trust. And the world is literally, people think, going to hell in a handbasket, and someone's got to do something about it. The reality is, is that there are a lot of things going on in our world that is wrong and are reasons for us to look at and have great concern. There's no doubt about that. And we as Jesus followers are not going to and can't put our heads in the sand and pretend that there's not things going wrong in this world. While at the same time, though, we have to recognize that God is doing a lot of amazing things even right here in front of us. And while there are things that are obviously going wrong, there are so many things that are going right and we just can't ignore that. But what we often do is that we often find that which we're looking for. Now you just take the illustration of two different kinds of birds. You take a buzzard and a hummingbird, a buzzard is always searching for the dead things that are lying around, whereas the hummingbird is always looking for the sweet things that are around. And the Bible confirms this in the book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 27. It says that whoever seeks good finds favor, but evil comes to those who search for it. 
You see, if you want to find a reason to be negative or negative things in this world, you want to be miserable, you can search for it and you can find it. But also, if you search for good, you can also find that as well. You know, and I've shared this before, and I unfortunately have to share it again. But you know, one of the hardest places for me to be optimistic is driving on Highway 19. It's like I have decided to be angry when I get in the car. In fact, just the other morning as Jenny and I were on the way to the gym, you know, it was early in the morning, 5 o'clock, and there was already someone in the way that they were driving that just created some negativity for me. And she just encouraged me and says, Mike, I think you just need to drive a different route. Change the scenery. And you know, that may very well be something that I need to do. But folks, we just can't help but recognize I may change the scenery, but that won't change my heart. And you know, some people are the same way when it comes to their work. You know, it's like before they even go, they're already angry and upset. Some people feel that way about going to school. And some people even feel that way about gathering with their friends at church. But what I want you to understand is that I'm not coming to you today from this pop psychology, talk yourself into a positive stance theology at all in any form or fashion. But we as God's people, we should not be optimistic based, based upon feelings. We should be optimistic on the basis of truth, on what God's Word teaches us. And so what I want to do today is I want to give you eight different reasons why we should be optimistic from Romans chapter 8. And so I just pray you're ready because we're going to strap in we're going to go here real quick. First of all, we should be optimistic because my sins are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says this in Romans 8, verses 1 and 2, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For those of you who have surrendered your life to Jesus, you have been made new in Christ your sins are forgiven as far as the east is from the west. God has thrown them into a sea of forgetfulness. They are no longer there. And I don't know about you, but for me, I have been forgiven of a lot of things in my life. And so because of that, we should be incredibly optimistic when we consider what all God has done for us through Christ. He shed his blood so that we could be forgiven. And because of that, we should be an optimistic people. Secondly, we should be optimistic because Jesus is at the right hand of God praying for me, praying for you. The Bible says this in the, in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse number 34. It says this. It says, who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that is just absolutely mind-blowing. The thought that Jesus is praying for me makes me eternally optimistic, and I pray that it does for you. The scripture teaches us that he is in prayer for us at the right hand of the Father. And that should get us just excited knowing that. Now, in my life, I, I got to be honest with you, I get really excited when I know those who are really intense prayers are praying for me. I mean, it really gets me motivated and excited. I can tell you over the years, my mom has prayed a lot of just passionate prayers for me. And I've shared before how I've walked in and, and heard my mom in the depths of the basement in the dark just praying for me. And just the tears that I know that she has shed 
that praying to God to help me be a person after his heart. I also know how Jenny prays for our family, for our kids, and just, and just how intently she is focused on doing that, that God would just move and work through them, through our family. I also know of like Patrick Parchment, pastor at the Mandeville Church in Jamaica, and how I used to go there on mission trips with groups. And I remember one particular time I was there and just really going through an intense struggle in my life. And I shared that with the group over there. And boy, they started praying for me. And I'm going to tell you, I was so encouraged. I was so uplifted. I was so emotional. And they were just interceding for me uh, because of what I was going through. I remember the first pastor I worked with when I was a youth minister at the Lower Grassy Church of Christ. Larry Barrow was the pastor there, and I'm going to tell you what. Boy, when he prayed, he had that deep voice, and he just had that thunder that when he prayed, I mean, man, you just knew he was connecting with God. And man, when he was praying for me, it was just overwhelming. And then also on a daily basis right now, I know that old George Hayner is praying for me every day. We, we connect with each other regularly. We pray for one another because we know that life is difficult and we need to be prayerfully encouraging one another. And I know he's interceding for me each and every day. And just maybe someone you know, listening today, you, you don't have those you know, who are maybe praying with you or praying for you, but I want you to know this, that the Lord Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and Jesus knows exactly what you've been through. He knows exactly what you're going through right now because he lived on this earth, and he knows exactly what you need, and he's interceding for you in prayer. Because of this, we should be a very optimistic people because Jesus is praying for us. Thirdly, we should be optimistic because my future victory is greater than my present pain. When you look at your life, your future victory is greater than your current or present pain. And I'm personally optimistic because I'm go what I'm going through now is doing something in me that God is going to use to sharpen me, to conform me to the image of his son Jesus. And therefore, my future victory is greater than the present pain that I am experiencing or even feeling in my life at this time. The Bible tells us this in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse number 18. It says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Now, some of you may say, well, you know, that's easy for the Apostle Paul to say. But listen, folks, if you say that, you have no idea then what the Apostle Paul went through in life. Now, I know many of you are going through some very significant things right now in your life. But the Apostle Paul went through every bit of something as significant and way more. Scriptures talk about him being beaten, being shipwrecked, being whipped, being left for dead, being snake bitten. Over and over again, he was tortured for his relationship with Jesus Christ. And yet he says, I consider these present sufferings not even worth comparing to the glory of what God is going to do through me. And some of you, right now, you're in the middle of some tough things in your life. But please know this. When we stay focused on the eternal perspective, it's not even worth comparing to what we're going through now to the eternal glory of what our God, whose name is above every name, can do through our pain. God wants to leverage what you're going through right now to bring you closer to him. The Bible tells us this in the book of James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, that whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. 
Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So folks, we just need to be a people who are optimistic. That we are optimistic because our future victory is much more significant and greater than our current pain. Fourth, we should be optimistic because our mind is filled with the peace of God. The scripture says this in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse number 6. It says, the mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. To those of you who have been born into the family of God, you don't have to be dominated by your fleshly, sinful nature any longer. Your mind, the Bible says, can be renewed. It can be transformed by the washing of the water of God's holy word. And that God's word renews your mind and you stop thinking the negative pessimistic thoughts, the earthly sinful thoughts, and instead you get an eternal perspective based entirely on God's truth, not on some type of feeling. And suddenly when you begin to see things from God's perspective because of his goodness, because of his strength, and the way that he can bring glory to his name, even through the worst and the most difficult of situations, in the middle of a trial, you could have a supernatural peace that goes beyond our human ability to understand. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've been in the middle of a horrible situation and other people are going, how are you able to be so calm and cool in the middle of this? How are you getting through this? And you can just simply say, you know what? I'm not getting through this on my own. My mind has peace because I know God is with me. Because I have peace in my mind that God is in control. And if we choose to be governed by the Spirit and not by the flesh, then our minds will be filled with the peace of God. Now, fifth, we should be optimistic because God is for us, so who can be against us? God is for me, who can ever be against me? Scripture says this in the book of Romans chapter 8, Verses 31 through 33, listen to what he says. He says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Now, folks, let's just call this like it is. If God is for us, really, who can be against us? And some of you may be thinking the same to yourself right now. You know, hey, Pastor, listen, I know someone is against me right now. And folks, the truth is, yes, people will criticize you. People will come against you. People may not like you. They may take shots at you continually. But the truth of the matter is, is that if God is for you, what does it really matter if people oppose you? If God approves you, then what does it matter what other people think? Now, I'm saying this, but I got to be honest with you, folks. I struggle with this myself. But we have to learn to trust what God's Word says and not allow our feelings to overwhelm us and doubt the Word of God. We have to trust Him. In fact, when we start living boldly for Jesus, and I pray that we will, and what we have to understand is that people may still make fun of us, they may persecute us, they may ridicule us for our faith, but if God has our back, does it really matter what other people are saying or thinking? And some of you may say, well, you know, Pastor, nobody's really persecuting me right now. And you know, I've said this many times before. 
For me personally, I, I don't worry when people persecute, persecute me because they persecute those who are following Jesus. I am worried or I get concerned when no one is persecuting me. Now, I say that this morning, and I pray that that didn't step on someone's toes. But if it did, I owe you an apology because I was aiming at your heart. I was aiming at your heart because we have to recognize that when we follow Jesus Christ, we are going to be persecuted. But if God is for us, what does it matter what other people say or do? If God called me to do it, God is going to provide the way. If God called me to do it, even if people don't like it, I'm glorifying God. If God is for me, who can be against me? If God is for you, who can be against you? Now, folks, I believe that we should be optimistic because God is for us. And that he plans to not only prosper me and bless me and not allow anything to harm me, to give me hope in the future, but he gives all of those promises to you as well for those who are in Christ Jesus. For those of you who are watching today and you have not given your heart and life to Jesus, I want you to know that these are promises of God available to you if you would just turn your heart and life to him. The scripture says that God has plans to bless you, to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. Those are things that this world just cannot do. We can be optimistic because God is for us. Therefore, who can be against us? Number six, we can be optimistic because God's spirit is, helps me in my weakness. God helps us in our weakness. The Bible says this in the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 24 through 26. I want you to listen to what it says. It says, For in this hope we are saved, but hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Paul says this. He says, who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. And that is where some of you are right now. You're maybe waiting on God to fulfill a promise. And what does the Spirit of God do? It says that the Spirit helps us in our times of weakness. That whenever we are down, the Holy Spirit holds us up. Whenever we are hurting, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Whenever we feel alone, the Holy Spirit is our friend. When we are weak, the Holy Spirit is strong through us. And because of this, we can be optimistic because we are never, ever alone. We need to really take that personal and realize that I am never alone because the Spirit of God is always working in and through my life just like he can be for you. And we should be optimistic because of that. I know that when I am weak, I get to know God in a much more intimate way because that is when his strength carries me in my life. And even on a bad day, the day I'd never, ever want, I am able to get to know God in a more personal way because I have to totally lean on and trust him to carry me through. Why? Because his spirit is strong for me when I'm weak. Just like his word is true for you, his spirit will be strong for you in your time of weakness as well. Why am I optimistic? Not because of what I feel, but because of what God says. Number seven, 
We should be optimistic because God is working everything in my life for good. God is working everything in our lives for the good. The Bible says this in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. It says, And we know that in all things God works for the good to those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And as I've shared many times with our church family here at First Christian, the word all in this passage of Scripture literally means all. It means everything. It means the good things. It means the bad things. It means the mediocre things, the things that we're glad that happened, the things you wish would never happen, and the thing right now that maybe is just driving you crazy. God is working in that thing Scripture says, for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. You see, folks, there is not a thing that will happen in your life that the goodness of our God will not use to transform something eventually into that which brings him glory. Now, I want you to think about this for just a moment. Many people who have come to know and surrender their heart and life to Jesus Christ did so while in the midst of their greatest struggle and pain in their life. Now, you look back and you see the faithfulness of the hand of God and that somehow took that thing that you would have never chosen and have never want to experience again and God used it to transform to something good. And he's working even when we don't even see him. And that's the reality of what God is like. Sometimes you don't feel him. Sometimes you don't see him. Sometimes you actually will think that he's not working, but faith always tells you he's there. Long before tomorrow ever starts, God is always there. He knows how things work out, and he is so amazingly good and so powerful that he's working in all things and I just pray that that speaks to your heart today. And the very thing that's crushing your heart right now, one day you'll see the faithfulness of God having worked through that situation to the good. You can be optimistic because God is so amazing. He's working in all things to bring about good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Now, the last thing, number eight, is that we should be an optimistic people because nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And I hope that there's someone here today that really allows that powerful truth to just sink in to your mind. Listen to what it says again back in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. It says, For I am convinced that neither depth that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Folks, we need to just allow this truth to just, just saturate our mind that no matter where you go, God is there. No matter what you do, God still loves you. Now, please understand, that doesn't mean that now if we come to Christ, that doesn't mean that we have a license to sin and continue in sinful behaviors. In fact, the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul says in chapter 6, how shall we who have died to sin live in it any longer? He says, God forbid. We have to stop that. But that doesn't mean that our God still or God has stopped loving us. God always loves us. And no matter what happens in your life, God is always cheering for you. He's always for you. He's always for me. We can't outrun his love. We cannot do something to cause him to stop loving us. You see, God already knew who we were and what we were about. And yet he still sent his son on our behalf. And we just need to have confidence and trust in that kind of love. And we can't run away from his presence. In fact, 
God oftentimes will run you down because he doesn't want to give up on you and he won't. And oftentimes people are praying for you, wanting you to give your heart fully over to the Lord. You see, deep down sometimes we want to be negative. Deep down we may not like something, but there's something inside of you that's just simply saying, I still want to believe. There may be a lot of bad things going on in this world, but I still have to believe a God who is bigger than all of the worst things that this world has to offer. The Bible says that I have a Savior whose name is above every name and that he's with me and that he's interceding for me. And I know he's doing the same for you. I am optimistic that God's word is spoken to someone who's watching and listening today. And I pray that you will just allow yourself to be a person who recognizes all of those reasons why we should be an optimistic people, a positive people in a negative world. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for this day. We give you praise. We thank you for your grace. And Father, give us the right attitudes. Give us the right attitudes, not because of what we feel, but because of what we know to be true. Thank you for your word, for your word is truth. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us online today. We hope that you'll continue in your time of worship to God by taking communion as a family. Let's do this in remembrance of Jesus. We'd like to encourage you to take a few moments to worship through giving. You can bring a check or cash to the office. You can give online at fccclearwater.org, click give, or you can text any dollar amount to 84321. We look forward to seeing you next week, church family. Love y'all.